Zitara ngu nonzi kuzi kwa shemi yengu. Ndozi ya basa wa denkros, ndiri grade 7. Shiku plante nchuro baita mwira uwe, nejimwe uwe. Ndotendo alwe ni manyonga nekundi tisa shiku plante. My name is Ashwi Mazena. I am one of the people who helped Tanaka alwe in processing shiku plante. So, eh, nina hangu pachesha hangu. Nda kutoka nasa gazila shiku plante. Pasina yopi ya Tanaka alwe. My name is Alwen Tanaka Manyonga. I'm a 25-year-old young man who recently graduated from the University of Zimbabwe. Uh, at the University of Zimbabwe, I was studying uh, electrical engineering. I was born and raised uh, here in Harare, but some parts of my childhood, I had to spend them in Chuota, where my parents have a plot. So for my high school, I studied at St. Mary's Magdalene's, that is form 1 to 4. Then for A level, I studied at uh, Visitation Makumbi, and that's when I decided that I wanted to do electrical engineering. For me to study electrical engineering, I think it was uh, a thing of passion, because I remember very well when I was growing up, I used to like uh, to break up things like at home like there was one time that I had to open like a television set just to see what was inside and I was really fascinated by this whole uh, by this electronic component that I was usually seeing so this this kind of shared my path uh, towards uh, electrical engineering I am the last born in a family of six and all my siblings and my parents are very supportive of my work and I think they really inspired me like to take on this journey that I'm on uh, right now of trying to bring light to every student in Zimbabwe. Chigub Lantern is a solar powered LED lantern that is made from uh, LED lighting electronic waste and housed in uh, plastic waste bottles. So the idea of the Chukub Lantern was inspired by two things and these things I had experience with them personally. So the first thing was uh, the poor access to lighting, you know. The idea of the Chukub Lantern was inspired by two things. So the first one was a problem of waste. So I remember like in 2018 I was doing my second year in college. So at home we had a lot of uh, solar lanterns that were no longer working and my parents wanted to dump those lights. So that's when I managed to fix those lights, but there was a challenge of the housing. So when I faced the challenge of the housing, I just thought maybe I could use like uh, plastic waste bottles uh, as a housing for the light, right? So that's when I put like the components inside uh, a plastic waste bottle and the light uh, came out and the light, uh, the light was really nice. And that time I, I had to ask my mom like if she could use it because uh, she was usually like at our rope place in Chuota. Uh, then uh, my mom that time actually faced some challenges because like it didn't have like a standard charging port and everything so it was very difficult for her to like to charge it. Fast forward in 2019 uh, we faced uh, load shading which usually lasted up to like uh, between 12 to 18 hours so th that same time I was actually doing my third year so it was kind of difficult for me like to read it now so that's when I went back to that line chain that I made like the previous year so the light I had to modify a little things uh, on it then it started to work some wonders for me so I was actually like using the, like the light to study during that time so during that time when I was studying that's when I actually thought like this act can actually like impact more people especially in the rural communities because like that time I was in Harare and we used to have electricity but it was only for a short term but then so when I actually thought like the way rural school students uh, who, uh, who didn't have any type of electricity so it simply means for them they do, do not have any type of lighting that they could use for studying at night so um, that's when I started like to develop more around like the idea and started to think oh, what uh, what are the different types of plastic waste bottles could I use and the different types of electric, electronic waste that I could use. Then in 2020, I had an opportunity to pitch uh, in a competition that is called uh, the, uh, the SAOL Young Lighter competition. Uh, it's done by an organization in the UK that is called uh, SAOL Young. Uh, that is called the Society of Light and Lighting. Then, to my surprise, I was given that award. Uh, I was named the SAOL Young Lighter 2020. And that award uh, actually came with a prize money for me. And I was now able to like try out different ideas. And that's how this whole idea like started. I 
I was awarded the SAOL Young Lighter 2020, and I got uh, like two trophies and also like uh, some money. So some part of that money I had to use it like to try to scale up my idea. That's when I was able like to try different types of containers for digital planting or even different types of uh, electronic waste uh, to sell it for a particular container that could make our idea like work. Then in the, in 2022, I uh, was able like to register uh, like my startup, which is called Zambezi Art Technologies, uh, which is now like um, which is now now which is now pushing like the idea of the Chico Blanchard. So the idea of the Chico Blanchard is mainly focusing like on students, and our vision is simply to ensure a life for every student because we have realized that lighting is very crucial for the education sector. So under this um, under this idea of trying to ensure a lot of for every student, uh, we also like offer sustainable skills transfer to the students. So for the sustainable skills transfer, we have come up with a, com a more comprehensive training where we train students uh, topics that are more related uh, to climate change. So we actually offer like the students a more comprehensive training which covers topics like uh, waste management, uh, like proper plastic waste and electronic waste management, uh, the circular economy. Uh, the basics of electricity and renewable energy and finally they get to know how to make their own chico blanche so the reason why we added this sustainable skills transfer to our idea was that we wanted uh, to create a lantern that would last longer but what we also realized that uh, there were many initiatives that came before us that were actually giving students some lights right so just imagine an organization would go to Binga and leave students with lights right but that was more for a short time because whenever those lights fail, the students didn't uh, were simply going to dump those lights and they were now adding up to electronic waste. But with our idea, we're actually now giving the students some skills that whenever we leave them with the lights, they now have the skills that they can actually repay those lights. Chigublantin has been getting a positive response which has actually given us time like to work on improving the idea so like when we started uh, last year in 2023 i think we managed to distribute a, a total of 500 lanterns and most of these were distributed like in schools where we were doing like trainings and some of them were just uh, distributed to individuals where we actually like just testing the idea just to see how it works and uh, that whole year we had great support from organizations like UNICEF through their Generation Unlimited program uh, that actually gave us a chance uh, to learn how we can operate like our social enterprise and give a bigger social a bigger social impact. Then this year this year uh, we had an opportunity to get support from the Australian aid. During the month of February, we were able to train 300 students in six schools and in each school 50 students benefit, benefited from a sustainable skills transfer and also those students actually got some lanterns. And for some of the schools that we have worked with, uh, there's a school that is in Chiwata, where I actually come from. Uh, they actually recorded an increase, uh, an increase in their price rate last year uh, for the students that were actually benefiting from the Chigublante. So this positive response has actually helped us uh, to carry on with this journey because we are actually like seeing some results of what lighting light uh, what the tube lantern can actually do into the lives of these students and then even for our sustainable skills transfer like we have also been training some students even here in the Budiro 3 community and they are now have a, their behavior towards waste has actually changed and they are now uh, they now have a better understanding of of how they can manage they can probably manage their waste instead of dumping their waste they now know how they can reduce it reuse it or even recycle from the skills that we are actually giving them Aggressive in the Kakapasa Sakanaka from four Yaka Passa Sakanaka from six Yaka Passa Sakanaka. A kind of invest Yaka Passa Sakanak. Bata Bata Guva Gazrachi Goop. Aga Gazrachi Fafilit was Mamanda Gazra. I'm ready to go Gazra Shua Gazin Dinda Gazir. 
We're actually targeting to reach 6,000 students uh, with our lanterns and we are looking forward to get more support from different organizations that would like to support uh, climate related activities and also like that organization that would want to support the improvement of the education sector. Uh, then in terms of our expansion plans, um, we are, last year we actually did some bit of trials like in South Africa and Zambia. Then this year we actually did the trials again because we had a lot of improvement that we had to make like on the lantern itself. So this March we actually in South Africa where we did train 100 students and the, uh, the response that we actually got in South Africa was also very positive. This is because our solution is actually addressing a problem that affect a lot of people on the African continent because from statistics it actually states that over 70 percent of the raw population in the world of sub-Saharan Africa they do not have access to electricity and among these there are millions of, stu millions of students uh, who do not have access to reliable lighting so we believe that our solution can actually impact can have a greater impact even beyond the Zimbabwean borders. My electrical engineering background actually played a very crucial role for me like in this, uh, in building up this whole idea because uh, like from, even from the basics of electricity that I was doing, I was, I was able to come up like with this concept. So adding on to it right now, we are now even venturing into the war renewable space management where we are actually doing like solar installations, even electrical installations, even like offering services like lighting design. One of the challenges uh, that I faced during the inception of this challenge was mainly like uh, not being able to access uh, some funds that I could use to like scale up this idea. Then the other thing was is that uh, like Looking at our Zimbabwe environment, like I do not have access to certain things that I might need uh, to properly, like to fully develop like this idea, like access to machinery. So sometimes I end up like importing things from China or even South Africa. So this one is really is still a difficult thing because at some point it's very costly for me to import things since we are still starting out. But we hope in future we'll be able to access like all the things that we need to help us have a greater impact. So lighting is very crucial like for the education sector because every student like whenever they go home they will need to study. So looking at the raw areas where they do not have like electricity uh, it's very essential for them like then even in the urban areas right now uh, we face a lot of uh, load shading so they really need the lighting so we we as a startup like equipping these students uh, with that they can actually make their lights uh, can make them uh, we're actually giving them some technical skills that are very essential and these skills are actually like support uh, the same uh, the STEM subjects that they even learn in school so under like our even our, under our like our sustainable skills transfer there's a whole section we talk about electricity and renewable energy which is more of an engineering topic and we really feel like this is essential for the students because they now have skills that they, they can apply in the real world then also looking in the on the issue of sustainability uh, the the topic of climate change is a big topic right now because right now we are facing droughts, uh, we are not getting any rains. So for our education system, I think the Chukub Lantern is very crucial because it's also even try, trying to give the students a very, a very good practical example of what they can do with the waste that they have in their environments and they can actually become the change they are looking for. Practice is the best teacher for everyone. So if you want uh, all young people to pursue careers in engineering, I think we should just give them like practical things that come from the engineering world, right? So for instance, I remember one time people were actually complaining like they, we have some kids in China, they're actually being taught robotics at a very young age. But here in Zimbabwe, are being taught like uh, the parts of a locust and everything. So I think if we start to apply like uh, certain practices like in our education system where we teach, where, where we actually give practical skills to the students, uh, we can have more people uh, opting to do like uh, these things like engineering.
in the night for my man, that no garacuno would be the three, but do sell by Eglin shopping center. Tilda could tend a light red or a chigubu lantern. Ratu could donate one and come and away do my youth the way do a moon around the medu Aluin Manyonga. Tilda could tend a neighbor's are good till and a good tipper rujeco light irrakanaka no good till no tipper rujeco and where I carried by for a long time to chuona, especially money room. Get Sinato on a marizedu, she wearing as a mavenda, she wearing a marizedu, Sinato on a cabaruca, and as in our baruca, to the Lagutan, I'm coma no semioti, one on your curu, the quit out of a moment as his own, now the mad drags was up in the mad drags. When I went to Akanaka, we are quitter, soon as a maoko, Arkansa quitters and the maoko, we elate Izukuti Basil as a car, Muzimba, Tinoanya to own a rujeco, light at Akakana for a long time. Light like a little time, Yagareba, reaching out to own. We are now a good score, washing out to wearing. My students, I'm washing out to wearing. Oh, was it all my color? Was it everything? Saka, to not a good tender school in the man who do Alwin Manyonga. Ne donation, Yarkutti and my light. Ake each lantern is made using two plus two plastic waste bottles and they weigh around 50 grams like each uh the finished lantern actually weighs around 50 grams so for each lantern that we make we're actually saving 50 grams of plastic waste reaching the dump size so one of the uh, the first thing that we need to to do is to cut like our plastic waste bottles are uh, to make a top housing and a bottom housing for our cheap good lantern So after we cut them, we come up like with the top housing and the bottom housing. Which, so our, uh, then we actually also reuse LED lights, uh, LED lights. So usually when LED lights fail, people simply dump them, but we actually take and reuse them. So after like we have uh, processed our LED lights, we also reuse some cardboard boxes which are used for holding our LED lights. So. We then need to test if our LED light is working before we do the final assembly of everything. So we simply need to test if the LED light is working. Then when we are done with the uh, with putting the LED light on the inside the container, we now need to do like the final assembly. So the Chigub lantern, the, the whole process of making the Chigub lantern actually uses uh, like basic tools like our glue gun, soldering guns and uh, some trim knives. So when we are done, we enclose everything like inside like the plastic waste bottle. Then we simply run a test just to check if it's working before we finally close it. Uh, the switch for the Chikubi lantern is on the lid. So to switch it on, you simply like close the lid. Then to switch it off, you open the lid. So the whole process of making the Chikubi lantern is being simplified. And we offer trainings like to schools, where we go into the schools uh, with the two kids that they need to make the Chikubi lantern. And they can actually do their own collection on their own. 
then we help them like assemble like uh, the chuku blanchet so even for the raw schools we actually leave them with the tools recently we came up with a new product that we call the chieza mobile solar kit we, which we which we are deploying like in the schools that we do the training so this one is a power station that they can use and it's fully solar powered so it doesn't matter with, whether the school has electricity or it does not have electricity we're actually like providing them with more reliable power that uses solar energy